Hi, everybody. I'm Mel Dore, Chicago uh, Aloha Shirt Psychic, and I'm so happy I have Psychic Arthur, Arthur, oh, no, not Arthur in the house. Arthur. I always had a trouble with that, like author or Arthur. <laughs> I know. It's like I'm the author of an ebook by Arthur. There you go. And to contact him, how do they contact you? Besides the sandwich board that says we'll read for food. Yeah. Uh, it's basically psychicarthur.com. They can email me at psychicarthur.com. Right. Email is arthur at psychicarthur.com. And the phone number is up on my website, but it's 310-494-5955. So that's psychic, P-S-Y-C-H-I-C. Psychic, -C, yeah. Arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R -R mm -hmm. dot com. Correct. Uh, and uh, go to his YouTube channel and subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Uh, Thank YouTube you. Channel, Psychic Arthur. So, yes. uh, you know, uh, I see you getting a lot of subscribers. Well, I like that. I okay. see you getting a lot of appointments. So, uh, what, what made you... Uh, decide to go on YouTube? Um, and when did you first realize you were psychic and all of that stuff? <laughs> well, when you're a kid, you always know, you know stuff. And it, re I mean, when I was a little kid, I would walk up to people at like Pomeroy's or these department stores and start talking to people. And my father was horrified and would just pick me up and take me across to the other side of the store. Shut up. Not off the strangers. Yeah, yeah. It's like the kid that says, my parents told me not to get in a car with strangers and he called an Uber. But They didn't have Uber in our days. Oh, no, no, no. Um, but when it really came to prominence the first time was I was in second grade. And at the time, we I'm originally from Levittown, Pennsylvania. Then we moved to Indiana, Indian Indianapolis. And I was going to Catholic school there. And about second grade, we're talking about 1962. And that's when the nuns had the full wimpling gown. You know, the whole scary monolith. The penguins, thing. as they call them in the Blue Brothers, the penguins. The penguins, yes. So I just got this instinct to walk up to the nun and tell her something. <laughs> and in those days, that's like walking up to a judge in a courtroom without permission. You know, contempt of court. So I just walked up to the nun and she's like, what do you want? And I said, there's no need to cry. You don't have to cry. <laughs> okay. And I said, Sister Marie Jean is going to be fine. Don't need to cry. And she like looked at me and said, basically, Damien, go sit down. You know? So I sat down. The minute I sat down, the mother superior came over the loudspeaker and said, can we all have a moment of silent prayer for Sister Marie Jean? She was taken to the hospital. I mean, there's a... and after the teacher did a high requiem mass for mass for you because she probably no, it was more like an exorcism yeah. because um, That's my point. <laughs> in those days, you know, you're a little tight and you're going into in, into church and you're in a single file and the nun has the clicker, and everybody has to genuflect to the clicker. Oh, I remember that. And so we're genuflecting the clicker. And all of a sudden, I'm like, what's this? There's something. What is this? And I turn around, and the nun was flicking holy water on me. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's not sizzling, so I guess I'm fine, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I remember when the priest didn't face the congress. Yeah, exactly. That wasn't until Pope Paul... It was, the Vatican. It, was, it was after the Second Vatican Council when they yes, changed. Yes, the Vatican Council. Where they, they, and everything was done in Latin. My grandmother exactly. used to have the, the Missal Latin, and the red part you'd have to read. Oh, yeah. And it looked like the priest was saying, you know, he'd face the, the cross, and his back was to the congregation, and it sounded like he was saying, I play dominoes, you play dominoes, we play dominoes. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, and, well, well, actually, the high masses boy, back in those days, those were Oh, cool. my God. I was an altar boy once, though. Just I wasn't <laughs> because I got there late and I put in my cassock and I'm walking out with the chalice with the Holy Eucharist. 
And I'd like to drink the altar wine. It was really good. Yeah. Well, the the castle was too long. When I stepped on it, it ripped out the hem. The the chalice with the e Eucharist went flying. All these nuns are like putting, you know, uh Kleenex over the blessed Eucharist. And so people wonder why I ended up in the choir. So <laughs> that's how. Only yeah. open your mouth when we tell you this thing. Okay. Well, actually, I was younger than that. I remember one time at church. It's not about being psychic, but I was with my grandmother and, you know, body of Christ. And I'm looking at my grandmother and she's like, and the priest starts looking at me. I was, I'm just like four years old. I said, that looks really dry. Do they have jam with that? <laughs> I call it the fish food. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and i remember you weren't supposed to eat with you know an hour before you'd go like exactly. to communion and you'd be so hungry and, and then it's also you know the fish food stuck fish on fridays food. you know i'm sorry yeah fish on fridays, fish on fridays. yeah all that I wonder stuff. what happened to all of those people because years ago they had menial sins and mortal menial sins, sins. Menial and, meal and mortal. I, remember I asked the priest once well, what's the difference between a venial sin and a mortal sin well, a mortal sin. You see this mud? It looks like that on your soul. A venial sin is like, right? But I guess if you had too many it's venial sins, not menial sins. Yeah. If you had too many venial sins, then that happened to mortal That's sins. Enough. Yeah. So I guess my question is, all those people during Lent who ate meat on Friday... And they had up all they added up all these venial sins. What happened to them after Vatican II? Because they would have gone to hell, you know. Exactly. So what happened to all of them? They just would they take the elevator up to heaven then? Oh, an escalator and has a couple stops, but you know, it's just who knows? Are all those babies in limbo? You know, limbo was a place they said if a baby was born unbaptized, it went to limbo. But after Vatican II, they did away with limbo. So what happened to all those babies? Are they floating around in space somewhere? I don't know. They're doing the limbo. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> How low can you go? The but, uh, I did like the fish fries on Friday, though, because that fish was really good. Really? My mother used to make codfish. It was like, uh, no, we used to go to the fish fry, and it was like fried, and put it on with a little slice of cheese and on rye bread. Oh, it was so good. With tartar sauce. Yum. We didn't have that. <laughs> Yeah, we used to go to, actually, we used to go to a cafeteria once in a while, and this one woman would go, hey, kid, you want some tartar sauce? It was like, yeah, and she was very friendly with the, the other female there, so. I remember we used to always go to the fish fries, and the, and the um, and they had the cake wheels, and you know, you could, or, or oh, they yeah. had the money wheels, like you put money on a number, and if it won, you'd win X amount of money or cakes. My grandmother always won stuff. I never won anything, but I would, Grandma, please, please, <laughs> and she'd walk away with uh, this pocket full of coins and a, cra and a nice. case or something. <laughs> That's good. And did not go to the poor box. Yeah, the Catholic was kind of fun growing up because you could gamble, you could cuss, and you could, you know, then go to confession and be forgiven and do it all over again. Well, it's like my friends from down south. They'll say the most vile thing to someone and then say, God bless. Oh, I know. And get well, away bless your me. heart where I come yeah. from. Or bless your pee-picking heart. Yeah, right. Tennessee. Okay, Ford. so what made you decide later on to um, delve into your psychic abilities and to get on YouTube and and well, do it? Actually, it was it, it was a bit of a journey because you know I didn't come out of the gate saying I'm going to be a psychic, you know, even though I knew things, and you learn not to use it after a while or keep your mouth shut. And I was always an outcast in school. I was never. And so I thought oh, that's when I got interested in music and I music saved my life because I, I don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for that. I was just music is life. excellent, by the way. Oh, thank you. So, and then I moved here to Los Angeles uh, in the eighties to go to film scoring, film scoring at UCLA. And then one thing, one job leads to the other. And I ended up being a writer reporter for 13 years. You know, going doing a little bit of music here and there, but in those days we didn't have computers. You had to have a full orchestra to hire. So I was at that time I was back working in New York, and I got a call 
from the bureau chief in Washington, D.C. saying, can you come down to Washington, D.C. like in the next day or two? I'm like, I guess I can find a story to do something. Why? She said, Gene Dixon wants to meet you. Now, Gene Dixon was our psychic for the magazine. She did a quarterly. Thing. She wrote a book called The Gift of Prophecy. I have it right here autographed. So what happened was I get this call. And so I go down to Washington, D.C. And I go to the restaurant and meet them for the, for breakfast. And there's this little lady, just like an aura that was blinding, just sitting there smiling. And the first thing out of her mouth was, you have a twin sister like I do. I'm like, yeah. And so we started talking. She started sh looking at my hands and looking at all these little stars in my hands. And she's showing me her stars in her hands. You're psychic, aren't you? I'm like, and there's a third party there. So we didn't really get into it much. So we had a great time. And also it was under the guise that she wanted to talk to me because she wanted me to do, write a column with her for the New York Times Syndicate, a children's advice column. It never really took off, but it is what it is. So then I went back to my hotel and about an hour later, I get this call and it's Jean Dixon. And she said, I want you to come to my townhouse in my office. I'm like, well, I'm actually waiting for it. She said, you're not going to get the story today. They're going to call you tomorrow. So I have you for the rest of the day. <laughs> so I went there and it was funny. She was, had this big selectric, you know, the typewriters. She's writing an op-ed piece for the New York Times. And she said, and she rips it out and goes, look at this. What do you think? And she said, I'm not sure about this paragraph. So I looked at it and said, oh, well. I rewrote it for her and, and said, what about this? She said, great, fine. Now we got that out of the way. I want to talk to you. You know your psychic, right? And I said, well, I, I know a lot of things, but, you know. And then she stopped and looked at me and said, oh, by the way. And this is when you, I was going through that phase in my life. Like, I, I, I mean, I knew what I was besides psychic, but you didn't know how to put in words. And this is, ta we're talking about the 80s. So it's kind of out, but not. And she said, by the way, you are not a mistake. God does not make mistakes. You have your feelings, they're from God. So don't question them. You are who God made you to be. And that was it. So that's how she broke the subject. So then you started doing your psychic work as well. Well, I started, I I put it away a little bit. I I I mean, when I was in college, I bought some tarot cards and all that and, and reading books and all this kind of stuff, but it never really gelled for me. And then after that meeting with her, everything sort of like amped up. And then I moved to Los Angeles and back to Los Angeles, actually. And then I met this British psychic who introduced me to the uh, Lenormand deck and helped me to hone my stuff. So... But it was Jean that really became my mentor. She, I mean, we talked about astrology. We talked about a lot of stuff. And she, was, she said when she was growing up that in Los Angeles, her parents knew that there was something different about her because she knew things. Staunch Catholic, they took her to the Jesuits. The <laughs> Jesuits priests taught her everything she said about astrology. And best books in the Vatican best books on the planet on astrology in the vatican she said and don't what makes you think the popes don't have their own like three astrologers come on really? and she said you know it's um and the other thing that she said which always stuck with me is even though she was a staunch catholic went to church every morning she said don't forget religion is man-made so it's flawed spirituality is our gift from god so it's not never question yourself okay and i asked her i remember once i asked her about you know but it's gifts from god that we have and we charge money for it and she said you know what you know my friend leonard bernstein do you know who that is i said of course he goes fine he's got this great gift from god writing all this music and conducting and he makes a ton of money using his gift from god so what's the difference And she had a way of just putting things in perspective. So we got questions we got to get to, but I want to oh, get I'm sorry. To... No, it's okay. No, no problem. I'm... <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. 
<laughs> but I, you know, so I want to get. I to barely, you. I don't talk about this stuff that much, so it's kind of interesting. Oh, no, that's okay. It's good. Um, so, what, so fast forward real fast. So then. I left the magazine that I was working for. I went for, to a television show and I wrote the music for the show and I was one of the writers. And then the show went to hiatus and then 9-11 hit and nobody was working. I couldn't get a job. And I'd always read for people. So my friends saying, why don't you just put out your shingle, start reading, make some money. So that's basically 20 years ago, whenever 9-11 was, that's when this all started. And then... It was also after my father died. And that to me was, there was a trauma with that. So I feel that trauma in my life opened my third eye really fast. That and needing a paycheck. So that's where this started. And then the reason for the YouTube channel is because of you. No, I had a reading with you and we were talking about it. And you said, you, do, you should do a YouTube channel. I said, I'm not ready. And you said, do guided meditations. And that's what's on my tube right now. Those are really good, by the way. Thank you. Listen, listen. Um, no, it's just, there's different topics. And I do, I'm trying to put one up, one or two up a month on them. So they're fun. So that's a fast forward, cliff note version. <laughs> okay. Are you ready to get to some questions? Yes, I am. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> Spin the wheel. Drum roll. The cake will go. <laughs> Sorry, I just um this point. <laughs> All right. KBG says, Hi Mel and Arthur. Who comes up with the GLP culture war stuff like trashing drag queens, trans kids, and basically bullying anyone who isn't a white heterosexual male? Who comes up with the terms like cancel culture, Antifa? radical left is there some right-wing think tank where they dream up those snappy slogans and decide which marginalized group they can pick on she says thanks yes i don't know if it's a think tank i just but, think well i mean they, well that's an oxymoron when you're talking about gop because they have to have a brain to think well yeah i think tech is an oxymoron when it comes to some gop <laughs> so i mean the maggots have their way of doing things but it's i feel it's like people get these little clever ideas I well, mean, you know, they it, have this this way of. I actually feel psychically that once in a while they do have some focus groups on what words work in their own way. I think they just have political strategists. However, it's like my friend James says. M many, most of these politicians don't give one hoot about their constituents. They don't really care. No, no. I mean, I was, I was going to be Pythian when you said who does this stuff. I was going to say self-hating uh, gay men that think they're white and GOP. Sorry. It's, it's like he says, they don't care about abortion. They don't care about trans people. They don't care about LGBTQ. They pander to the ultra white Christian nationalists because they want to keep their power. And when he said that, my guides, my guides put the psychic light bulb in my head. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, I think, you know, they, they're, they're, they're always, they, they gain power by marginalizing people. That's how well, Hitler, well, that's what well, Hitler divide did. and conquer. That's you what know? Hitler did. That's yeah, what Mussolini. Mussolini. That's what Putin is doing in Ukraine. You know, there's Nazis there. Yeah, well. And that's what Ron DeSantis is doing in Florida. Correct. And that's what Abbott is doing in, 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 in Texas. Texas. So anyway, um, they play on people's fear. But uh, and who was it that politician Knowles that said uh, that uh, transgender but people should be, should be eradicated? eradicated? Eradicated, yeah. yeah. And, and then I, he, wonder he, I wonder if he ever watched Flip Wilson growing up. Probably not. You know, with Geraldine right, and right. Milton Berle and Drag and all and those people. He, but then he backpedaled. Oh, I didn't think they should be eradicated. I yeah, I I, I, I read that. It was like that's you what know. you said, right? But anyway, so we have to speak up. And my guides show me these for a while. Some of them might look as if they win the battle, but they won't win the war. No, I mean, I always get whenever I think of this stuff. I'm not a terrorist, I'm a clairvoyant more. 
And I get this image of a wound. And a wound that has to heal, all that stuff has to come out to the surface. All that pus, all that gross shit. Sorry, all that gross stuff. Has I talk like a truck driver, so I'm sorry. But all this oh, you gross stuff. on YouTube. I can't. No. We'll bleep it. I can't. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> anyway, sorry, people. Entertainment purposes only. I'm a potty mouth. So anyway, and so all this pus and everything comes out of the wound. And so in order for it to heal, all that has to get come to the surface and leave. And that's what I feel we're going through right now is all these crazies are coming to the surface. And it looks like they're winning. They're not going to. They're going to go away. Good. Okay, Rob wants to know, do yes, you Rob. see any hurricanes hitting the mid-Atlantic states or Washington, D.C. this spring, summer, or fall? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm getting something in September that's going to be a biggie. Um, I see one, a couple of huge hurricanes coming that'll come all the way up the eastern seaboard. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm looking at. Yeah, but I'm just saying something about September. There may be two that are like linked to each other. And yeah, we'll see what happens there. But I'm getting a yes on that. Sorry, Rob. Okay. Libby Lou asks, Hi. So I just saw on our local news that an Illinois Republican politician is creating a bill to not only place restrictions on abortion, but to pave the way towards banning it here in Illinois. Do your guides see Illinois outlining or restricting abortion rights in the future? I know Governor Pritzker won't sign anything like that, but I'm worried the next time we get a Republican governor in the future, they will push this through and even mess with our voting rights because uh, you know how some of these uh, politicians are. I hate to say I don't see it happening, but I don't. As long as downstate and here in Illinois, we say downstate because that's Springfield, as long as the Republic, I mean, sorry, as long as the Democrats control the House and the Senate, they can try all they want. Even with a Republican governor, they can try all they want to get a bill through, but it'll never get through the House. It or the doesn't get, right, it doesn't get through. I, I mean, I feel they're going to try, uh, but it ain't going to be what they want it's not going to happen um good i actually feel that uh, i don't know what it is now in illinois but i was going to say i heard the word codify when you're the, talking the word what codify they'll codify row wave in Illinois. Um, well ultimately i see roe v wade being upheld i agree to that too okay sherry says because of the long-lasting war in Ukraine and sanctions on Russian oil, do you see a world oil shortage? No. Nope. nope. Not at all. I mean, if, if there is, it's because of the oil-producing companies are trying to... They're going to hoard it, and they're going to make, oh my god, we don't have any, and they're storing it. But I would rather put $100 a gallon, pay $100 a gallon, than put one cent a Putin's Moscow mud in my gas tank. Exactly. I agree a thousand percent. And gas here is at 529 this morning. Okay. Diane, how much? I'm sorry. 529. That's not that expensive here. It's three something. Anyway, the Diane Brewer. When will uh, Netanyahu go away? He's a horror and the U.S. should never support him. He's the one that that's uh, the president or the a prime minister of Israel. Minister of Israel. Sorry. I see him gone. He's you know he was indicted, but I still see him in hot water. So I think he tried to revamp the whole system, but people he, were like protesting. No, he, he tried to yeah do it. I don't know if that went through or not because I haven't been watching. It did, but people aren't happy. It, I don't see him around. In, I see him around. Not that he's going to leave us, but I see him not being the prime minister. So him, so am I, did I did I hear you correctly that he tried to pass those laws that would kind of protect him? That so they did go through. Or they did some not? of them went through from what I read, but what I'm saying in the long run, he's not going to be around long enough. I see him indicted at some point. Yeah, like somebody else. Well, he passed those laws to protect his own skin. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Ron Brock. 
Do you see Ukraine starting their counterattack anytime soon and continuing to push Russia out of their country? Any updates on Putin may be being forced out anytime soon. Thanks to both of you. When this whole Ukrainian war started, I mean, like the rest of us, I was horrified. And my relatives are, my mom's side, they were on the border between Ukraine and Poland. So, I mean, I was good. I have, I have cousins in that area. So I was freaking out. I always feel that, yeah, they're going just like they thought they would go in and like get everything done in a month. And we'll see a year later, they haven't really made the headway they thought they would. These guys fight. They love their country. They're going to fight. Well, my guides show me that it would take a, that, that Putin would never win in one month and he wouldn't win at all. And if he's not careful, it's going to be like another Afghanistan was to the Soviet Union, the Vietnam was to the United States, or Afghanistan to us. It's a war that he will not win. And my guides told me that the Ukrainians will fight if they have to until the last person. They're exactly. not going to give up. You know, I love when they first started, they get, the old ladies would give the Russian soldiers yeah. some flower seeds and say, so when you die, we'll have flowers. Right. Um I do see Ukraine getting a lot of the weapons they need, yeah. obviously the tanks and aircraft as well. I see. Coming. Get, I last time I was reading some about clusters, the cluster bombs they're going to get. I see them getting aircraft as well, mm -hmm. and my feeling is they're they've already trained a lot of pilots, Ukrainian pilots, yeah. to fly those aircraft. I think they've hesitated on it because they were afraid that Russia might escalate, but. You know, Putin is running out of money. I think countries like China and maybe India are sneaking him stuff under the table. But the Ukrainians, well, they have all... They have all the past they, get upset by, they, don't, they don't have any more money in, in, in less than a year. They have no more money in Russia. The United States has... I mean, I'm sorry. Ukraine has probably would have all of NATO uh, and all of the European Union on their side. So... Well, that's why Putin didn't want Finland or Sweden to join NATO. Right. And, and you know, did, I don't see nuclear weapons being used. So. I don't see that. I've never fed that up. Okay. Uh, I see Putin being forced out. But I, you know, a lot of readers say it's soon, but I think he's going to be in for a while. He's, but he, he is he is more paranoid and self-isolating. He. Whenever I look at him, I get the energies of like Hitler when he was in the bunker. That's exactly right. That's when exactly. he started really dingy. And I don't, every time I look at that man, I think his brain is Swiss cheese. There's something wrong with him. Well. Oh. We know that. <laughs> Entertainment purposes only, people. Okay. Uh, Beth Avidas. Hi, Mel and Arthur. Uh <clears throat> Will there be any catastrophic hurricanes hitting Belize in the next few years? I don't know how catastrophic they'll be, but I do see some the hurricanes, hurricanes exactly. some hurricanes hitting, but it's not going to be as deadly as some of them, like they hit Puerto Rico and the Caribbean, you know, within the past couple of years. Yeah, it's not going to level the place. Right. Okay. Um, hi, Mel and Arthur. As we see the... GQP, I think that probably means GLP, the G, uh, probably means QAnon, the GQP. Yeah. Uh, cannibalize themselves. Will independents <laughs> vote? Will independents vote for more for Dems in twenty twenty four? The stuff the GQP is saying out loud is insane. Well, we know that. Mm -hmm. Like Tucker Carlson, that oh, they were just visiting the Capitol. It wasn't that bad? <laughs> was like, Even wow. Mitch McConnell. Like, oh my god, <laughs> right. Carlson did. I think a lot of independents will vote for the Dems, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, because this, I mean, I love the she used the word cannibalize because that's what the Democrats are, you know, accused of eating little children. So, no, it's crazy, is crazy, and people don't want it anymore. I think, I think, um. It's going to be the month of responsibility. And so the people, when they come out, you know, like Tucker Carlson and all of that, 
I mean, a lot of Republicans said, what? I mean, you know, but who who gave Tucker Carlson those tapes? McCarthy. McCarthy. Right. Controlling the House, not McCarthy, Donald Trump. And I asked my guides why that was done. And they answered me the following way. It's to divert attention away from the truth because right. Trump knows he's going to be indicted and he can say, look, you see, it's a witch hunt because it, that, that really didn't happen. They were just vacationers. They were just uh, over here, people, and they don't mind the smoke. It was uh, peaceful chaos, <laughs> yeah, right? So, you know, I'm sure that, that you know, it's, Trump knows how to play probably Tucker Carlson as well. Um, Tucker Carlson is not a conservative. He's a liar. Exactly. For entertainment purposes only. But my guide said this, you know, and then he said that Officer Brian Sicknick, Sicknick's death. Oh my God, the family, like, leave us alone. He said, saying it, it he, said wasn't, it nothing, he said it had nothing to do with the riot. I'm like, what? There's footage of that. I'm sorry? There's footage of that. Of course. So everybody's like, what? You know, uh, I don't understand, you know, there's going to be a lot of lawsuits about that, specifically a lot of those officers that were hurt and him saying that it wasn't due to the riot. Their families are going to go after him. And you know what? They're going to win. Especially in civil suits. Well, the, the whole thing is here again, deceive, divert, distract, divide and destroy. Right. It's, it's a distraction. It's yeah. It's, you know, weapons of me- weapons of mass distraction. It's one of my favorite films. Exactly. So Trump will be like, "Well, you know, y- you see, they're they're going after me for nothing because it re- didn't really happen." I don't know. I think it's amazing that that McCarthy released those forty thousand hours of tapes to Tucker Carlson, and those tapes I saw that Tucker Carlson showed weren't even date stamped. They didn't have a date on them. Exactly. So they were filmed. So I mean, talk about yellow journalism. Uh, and, 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 da, da, da. and and look at all the other news medias out there saying why can't we have them it's just somebody call it a shock jock and i love that saying it's just mm-hmm. it's about feeding lies and then i heard Lindy, Lindsey graham's comments and he was like playing to both sides and i'm like oh please but you know he's going to be in trouble too so all right anyway uh, yes, I do see them cannibalizing themselves <laughs> in H Mountain Dancer. <laughs> yes. Yay. All right. Um, Ace S234 says, Do you think Trump will be publicly exposed for criminal munder- money laundering for the Russians with his properties? I think they already know where a lot of that dark money came from. Uh, they know where not only where the bodies are buried, they know where the shovels are kept, and <laughs> they really do. They just haven't. Told they, they know a lot. They're not coming out with. And they, they can't. Can. They can't. But a lot of it will come out. Yeah, a lot more is coming out. You know, and the, I the, do say this, that one day we do get the PP tapes. This is the month of truth and responsibility. So there we go. <laughs> well, especially with. This March, this March is extremely important this year, especially when we have Pluto going from Capricorn into Pisces at the end of this month. It all the all the crap is coming to the surface, and then we get to see what it is. And we have the full moon tonight. So there's a lot of illumination on all the crap. And full we get moon to... means secrets coming to the surface. Exactly. Moon is the keeper of the intuition. Okay. Jules, Jules 1280. Hi, Mel and Arthur. Love your show. Gentlemen, thanks for sharing your gifts with us today. Well, thank um, you for asking. Thank you. My question is, Florida has a new bill coming up which will legalize kidnapping of transgender yes. children. Will this become law? No. I didn't hear about them kidnapping transgender children. What, what, they're, what they're doing is they want to have it so that if a parent doesn't agree to having a child transgendered, but one of them does agree to it, they can stop it and take the child away. And even if it's from another state, 
it's across state lines that they want to do this. No, they, Florida can't pass a bill for other states. Well, I'm just saying that's yeah, that's their mentality. Well, if it ever goes to the Supreme Court, which it will, my guides tell me, and his book banning will go to the Supreme Court. And by know, the way, this fell out of my bookcase this morning. There you go. <laughs> Fahrenheit 451. I mean, when are they going to ban that one? If his, okay, yeah, when are they going to ban the Bible? That would cause an uproar, wouldn't it? In schools. Okay, so what I was saying was, my guides were telling me that, um, so him banning books, you know, to catch her, a catch her on the ride, to kill a mockingbird, him saying that teachers can't say gay, if a woman takes a morning after pill, she could be held for felony charges. Him now saying that you can take a child away from a parent yeah. because the child is transgendered. Or you're saying that, it's because it's the, the child's being injured. If well, that went to the Supreme Court, all right, I don't see those things holding up. I'm talking about the Supreme Court of the United States. One, you, can, you can't limit people's... Uh, expression of freedom by reading tell them they can't read books so if a teacher wants to say the word gay they can't stop that that's because, what about the kids that, i mean they're, they say they're doing this to save children but what about the children that are trans and gay and all that stuff growing up but, but you know they're they're playing on that old whole thing pray away the gay that you know if you take the kid away it won't be transgendered anymore that's a crock of bs and they know it as far they're, as i know it every, pandering, every every gay person i know is born from a heterosexual couple they're just pandering to the ultra right. And that's yeah. what he's trying to do to gain political favor. And he wants to run for president and it's not going to happen. If it, it will, he'll, he'll probably, he'll probably run for, run for president. But anyway, my point is if, if the court will stop this eventually, if the Florida Supreme court says it's okay. Other courts will say, no, it isn't. Appeals courts, everything, appellate courts, whatever. So yeah, I don't see it happening. They're picking on trans now. Then the next I'll be coming after LGBT, everybody that's gay or bi or whatever. And it's it's just a question of when. And it, and it's, you know, gay marriage has been codified, yay. But uh, I'm telling you. Uh, well, that's why, I mean, I, I have said, I, I when I talk to my relatives back east and they're like, are you in California? I'm like, yeah, what? <sighs> You know, like they start quoting the right wing. I'm like, I don't, I don't deal with it. No, you can't. Anyway, it's just hate. hold up because the parents have rights, and yeah. so do the kids. Uh -huh. Um. Okay. Ace Lynn, I think, is the word. Um. Will 45 be going to prison? I don't. I see him indicted, but I don't see him in jail. I've never, I don't see him in stripes or behind bars, but I do feel like his career is dead and he will not be able to run for anything. And, and that is more prison for this man that wants attention all the time and he's not going to get any. Um, but he's going to have his own private little hell to live in this. Let's see. And well, does Satan be in the books in Florida? Well, he'll try, but if it goes to, to the Supreme Court, they're going to say, no. you, you can't, you know, this people have the right to read what they want to read. Right. And and children, parents have the right to have their children read what the children want to read. Well, if he banned the books, you know, when they, when he did that, when he did ban certain books, oh my God, they were sold out on the internet. <laughs> of course. I mean, ban my book and it'll sell, you know. Well, if I had a kid in school in Florida, I'd say no, I'm homeschooling. Now watch, I'll try to pass a law where you can't homeschool your homeschool kid. your kid if they're if they're trans or gay. Other kids you can, but not trans or gay kids. No, if if I had a kid and I was living in Florida, it would be like, honey, we're moving. Well, some people can't afford to. I know. I know. Stacy J, when will Trump be held accountable? That's a good question. <laughs> 
Well, you know, Georgia, he's in trouble in Georgia and New York. A lot of places. We just don't know the fine print yet. Well, my guides had told me that women will bring him down. And this whole Stormy Daniel thing is is starting to resurrect again. So yeah, and it's stuff that that might like that Michael Cohen had talked about and predicted is all starting to happen, come to the surface. So, well, this I, is a, go ahead. I'm sorry. What I was going to say is, here on Earth, it may seem like it's taking too long, but in heaven, oh no, he's been judged in spirit. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, Catherine Benson. Some Republicans here in Georgia are trying to get Fannie Willis fired due to her investigations and possible right. indictment of Trump. What do you see coming of that? I don't see her fired. It's gonna happen. She's not going anywhere. I think they know better. And mm-hmm. if she is fired, ooh. Talk about going to the Supreme Court for uh ooh. for lawsuits. Um and I see I see more justices on the court as well at some point. Or some of these leaving. Well, I predicted two years ago that Clarence Thomas would be in trouble <laughs> because of Ginny. And I still feel he may be stepping down under health reasons, but it's not. It's other stuff. Um, well, a lot of us have said that, but I think... What's going to happen? My when I say I think, I'm really saying I'm predicting. Yeah. I intuit. I know. I know what you're saying. That uh, be more justices, not nine, but maybe eleven or twelve. I also see that there's going to be rules of conduct they have to follow. Yes, will almost be like law, and on certain cases, like where if they're if their spouse or somebody's involved, they have to recuse themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Okay. Let me see here. <laughs> okay, here's one, Bliss 52. It says, how much BS will we have to put up with from the repubes leading up to the 2024 election? All buckle up your seatbelt, you ain't seen nothing. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Uh, I'm already tired of it, and it's just started. Um uh, Guess I'll have to stop watching the news until election results are confirmed. It's called Netflix. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay. I give me Actually, one. I watched a movie the other night, Seven Days in May. Do you remember that? I never saw it. It's about a general that's trying to throw a coup, a coup <laughs> against the United States. This was Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas. I don't watch it. David Gardner. It was amazing. I don't watch it. It, it read so much of what's going on today. Um, here's one. Uh, after hearing so much controversy about where COVID started, will Dr. Fauci be dragged into Congress for his handling of it? Well, I mean, this this house is a witch hunt, you know. Yeah, they'll call him in, but they're gonna they're not gonna get anything out of him. I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. But this whole committee, some of the questions they were asking, and did you see Merrick Garland? He stood up to them. He didn't. Oh, God, yes. When he said, well, this stuff was leaked, and he said, actually, that was part of the stuff that Trump's people basically put in the file. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, wow. For documents. Okay. Wow. Somebody is asking that one of their bills went up, and I won't mention the name of the company. And when the person was called, bill by, by chance, I'm sorry, a utility bill. I, I don't want to say. Okay, go on. Go on. Uh, so when the customer called to ask why it went up, they said that Donald Trump was a shareholder, and that was why. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if any of that money is going to him. Probably, and, and I just wonder if they're going to donate to his financial run. That was that was the question. If it's not going to his financial run, it's going to his law fees. <laughs> so who's paying for it? We are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Sissy Crusoe says she wants to know if Condoleezza Rice will run for president in the near future. Also, will Holly, Cotton, Cruz, and Jordan be kicked off their judiciary judiciary committee soon? 
you know, I see them off the committee, but it's not that soon. I no. don't know if Condoleezza Rice will run for president. I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, I don't know if she's announcing or what she's doing, but... <laughs> I don't know, but... I mean, when I look at Donald Trump, you know, I heard uh, W, George W. Bush, say, uh, do you all miss me yet? <laughs> yeah. I thought he'd go down as the worst president in American history. I I was wrong on that one. <laughs> yeah, well, up until the time, you know. Right. All right. Uh, let's see. I've got... Well, I think... Uh, I think I ask everything <laughs> to the best of to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have any more questions. Oh uh, anything you'd like to talk about before we wrap it up? Just what a wonderful person you are. Oh, <laughs> I have my moments. No, but I'm I'm serious. Um, when I start when I came into to this whole YouTube stuff and started looking at it. Uh, a friend had turned me on, to, an astrologer friend had turned me on to Linda G and you. And it's just amazing what I've learned from you guys. And so I appreciate it and thank you. Oh, I've got a question. Oh, you're welcome. Well, you know, that, that happened to me. I had a YouTube channel. I think I had like three or 400 followers. And a friend of mine out in California, uh, Gunnar Gobels, told me about the Comanche Psychic, Comanche Psychic. And he said, can I give her your number? I thought, I don't care. And I guess she was emailing me. And, you know, I get so many emails. I, and yeah. so, um, I finally checked my emails and I called her. And so we started talking. And I said, um, she said, how about if, you know, I read for you and you read for me? I said, okay. So... I guess we set up for the following night. So when I called her, I said, do you, would you like to do FaceTime or would you you'd like to do Zoom? She goes, no, my hair's in curlers. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I'd like to say mine is too, but I don't have enough of it. <laughs> and I guess then she said, do you like Trump? And I let out this whole string of explicatives. Um, I said, you mean Cheeto head? <laughs> and she Trump said, so, after the readings, and she said, um, if I'd be on our show. And I said, I'd love to. And then she pushed me to do, to just build my channel. I'm like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. And she kept saying, no, your guides want you to do it. I'm like, yeah, I know, but. Well, well this is my first YouTube show. And we always remember our first. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what it's in. Well, couldn't walk for a week. I'm but not that's touching that one. <laughs> All right. Here's a good one. Kathy Reagan's. Um, um, oh, cool. My question is about Ukraine and the rebuilding contracts. Do you see Ukraine seeking contractors from uh, con contractors from Europe and the United States to start construction? Or do you see Ukraine seeking the assistance from China due to the affordability aspects for construction projects? I don't think they're going to go to China. No, not going to go to China. Also, I got a hesitation about the United States going in as contractors to rebuild because they, the troops can't go in to Ukraine. And I feel that, I mean, I know there's some people that, soldiers that have gone over to fight for Ukraine. And some have died, unfortunately. But I don't see contract. I do eventually, once this whole thing is over and we've had the uh, the Putin burial, then yeah. Well, you know, I do see American companies getting contracts to help build Ukraine, but I don't think anybody's going to stop. No, it's not going to be right now. Until the war is done. But I do think that some companies are going to go in and help them repair some infrastructure so they can have, try to keep like emergency yeah. gas, yeah. emergency heat, and emergency yeah. water and things like that. You know, I don't think that Ukraine would ever do any deals with China because um, they're going to know that China was helping Russia under the table. Right. And so Ukraine will give them the big middle finger. <laughs> yeah. Um, a question came to mind, and a lot of people have asked this, but it just popped in my head. Will the United States continue to send aid to Ukraine, money and weapons? 
I hear yes. I know, I know that there are certain people in GOP that are trying to block that, but I still see it happening. Well, they can block it all they want, and they and they now they're starting to yelp about you know the Democrats spend too much, but they let Trump spend more for, money. He spent more year, money. Trump he, spent. Trump spent more money than any president in American history and wasted a lot of on that stupid wall. <laughs> well, Trump brought how much debt the company, the, the country company had up until the time Trump went in, he doubled it in four years from the beginning of time for the states. So, I mean, it's nuts. And then it's, well, look, Every time we have a Republican in the House, Democrat president, we have the debt ceiling issues. You never heard a word about debt ceiling issues when Trump was around. Well, the debt ceiling is not about future spending, about us paying what we owe. What we ha already have, right. It's about paying what we've already spent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if they, if they hold the debt ceiling hostage, it's not going to look good for them. And they won't get paid either, so... <laughs> But, I mean, you know, those Republicans who, you know, talk about that, you know, they like Putin and all of this, then go live with them, you know, yeah. go and live with them and yeah. then report back to us how good it is. Yeah, I'll give you an airplane ticket and some borscht. Go. Bye. Exactly. We'll buy you round trip first class. No, one way first class. There you go. <laughs> well, round trip, but then when you get there, we'll just cancel your return. Yeah, yeah. right. After we get the money. Okay, so once again, if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do it? At psychicarthur.com, Arthur at psychicarthur.com, and let me say my phone number, sorry. Or you can leave a message at 301-494-5955. Is it 310 or 301? 310. 310. 310. 310. Got it. <laughs> this has been so much fun. We've got to do it again. I hope so. And when I get things going, there's an invite for you. The door's always open, Mel. Thank you. Thank you. Um, everybody call and get a reading from, from this man. He's really good. And uh, go to his channel and subscribe. And if you like today's, thumbs up. Thank you. And also, guided meditations. Yes. Help a lot. It, it helps with insomnia. I have a lot of clients saying they listen, they sleep now. The music is wonderful. On another show, we'll talk about how you compose the music, uh, but but you compose all of it, correct? And 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 you play it as well. Yes. Um, I don't say compose the music. It's more like creating the music for these things, like soundscapes. But you know, I I do the I do the writing, I do the voiceovers, I edit that, then I get the videos and they're not pastoral rainfalls or anything like that it's basically um looking at a lava lamp on crack because it's just it's just basically you know you're supposed to close your eyes so close your eyes but if you don't then there's this image Im abstract images but no it's 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 because of you mel that you suggested i do that so again thank you <laughs> Gee, maybe you're psychic. My job is just to give the psychic advice. It's up to somebody to decide whether they wish to follow it or not. Well, I always tell people I mix this stuff up and hope it happens. And they ask me, how do you know? <laughs> so You just know, right? Yeah. I have clients that call and say, tell me something that nobody knows. I'm like, I have three nipples. Nobody knows that. <laughs> Yeah, people say, what do you see for me? I go on an appointment. An appointment, yes. All right, this has been fun. Thank uh, you, Mel. Wrap it up, you guys. Uh, everybody stay well. Tomorrow night on Kevin Chandler. Friday, no, I'm sorry, tomorrow night, no. Tomorrow night with Aiden. Thursday night with Kevin Chandler. Friday night with Linda and Kevin Lewis. So, uh, uh, and they're all on my channel this week, so... Your dance cart is full. It's well, I'm not complaining, but uh, we're getting ready to go away, so I kind of wanted to squeeze everything in. Yeah, good. Have fun. We'll this, we will do this again. Thank you, Mel. All right, bye, everybody.